by the asshole for bringing up my brother's premature birth at Christmas dinner to get my parents to shut up. Weird. Okay. I am a nurse practitioner and I am a primary care provider for a lot of low risk maternity cases at the practice where I work. I also work hand in hand with the doctors and midwives to create a healthy maternity, birth, and postpartum situation. My fiance is completing her residency. We live together and have for a few years now. We aren't in any hurry to get married. We originally had plans to do so a couple of years ago, but then we got really busy for two years. It is driving my very religious parents crazy that their youngest son is living in sin. I don't really care. I'm an adult and I do what I want. We are getting married in June. So we are visiting my parents for Christmas. The way it came together this year, everyone is at my parents' house. So that's my folks, my three siblings, myself and fiance, and seven grandchildren. So 17 people total. At dinner, my mom starts going on about how she is so glad that we are finally getting married and she won't be embarrassed at church anymore. And my dad says how proud he is of one of his three older kids who all either waited to get married before moving in together or got married right away after moving in together. My fiance was getting embarrassed and I was getting mad over this stupid argument we have had too many times before. And a family dinner was the last straw. I have asked them repeatedly to just accept that they cannot control how I live my life. I refuse to stay with them when I visit, even if I come alone. Hotels are just easier. So I started talking about a premature baby I had been reading about. It was almost three months premature and weighed about 1.6 pounds. It was super strong and healthy for being born so little, and the NICU had high hopes for the baby doing well. My mom and dad both got deer in the headlights look on their faces. Too bad should not have fucked around with my fiance's feelings. So I asked about my older brother. He was born almost four months premature. Is there a chance that we could check out the family album where we keep all the records of family births and stuff? I already know my brother was over nine pounds and almost 23 inches long when he was born. (laughs) There's no way that baby was four months old premature no way my grandmother told me all about it the first time my parents tried to shame me i see where this is going the subject (laughs) gets changed very fast after supper my parents told me that i should not try to embarrass them with private things that are not my concern i told them that if i heard anything about my living arrangements ever again for the rest of my life I would make sure to keep bringing up the fact that my mom was in her second trimester when they got married. My parents are mad at me for telling them how to behave in their own home, but my fiance is happy that they seem to be off the subject for good. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for going no contact with my parents after learning they had lied to me about my allergies all my life? Hey everyone, I am 19 years old and my parents are in their 50s. For as long as I can remember, I have been allergic to several things. Dairy, wheat, flour, gluten, legumes. Since I was a young child, my parents have completely kept all of them out of our house. While other kids ate breakfast cereals, I ate fish and assorted pickled vegetables for breakfast. While other kids had Lunchables, I had grilled chicken or fish with, again, assorted vegetables, usually sweet potatoes. While other kids ate birthday cake at the birthday party, I had an apple. I never questioned this until a couple of months ago. I was at my aunt's house for my birthday party, and she made brownies for everyone. For me, she took great steps to make them with almond flour and avoided all of my allergies. I started eating them and thought little of it until my aunt suddenly looked at me and in a panicked way, asked which plate I took the brownies from. I pointed from the one where I got my brownies, and she immediately stood up and told me we had to get my EpiPen. She raced to ask my mother for it, and I sat there scared out of my mind because I had never mistakenly eaten flour before. I noticed my mother had calmed her down, and then she said that we don't need to worry because she had switched the plates of brownies, and after all, I had eaten the ones made with almond flour. 
I found this incredibly odd because really, why would she swap the plates? That doesn't even make sense. But for the time being, I let the issue rest. It didn't sit well with me for about a week, and I finally went to get an allergy test. The doctor started with a skin prick test, and lo and behold, I didn't react to any of the above substances. Then he ordered a blood test, and when the results came in, they said that I had absolutely no intolerance to any of the foods I'm supposed to be allergic to. I was furious and called my mother. She eventually admitted that she lied to me because she wanted me to be on a paleolithic diet and wanted me to be able to avoid all temptations. She raised me with a lie about her own health, but she keeps insisting that I try to see it from her perspective. She spams my phone with messages about how healthy I am, that I never had acne, that I have been in great shape my whole life, that I have strong teeth and bones, and even that I got onto a D1 college tennis team. She has started calling me ungrateful for her intervention and insisting that I really should be glad I never got, quote, carb addicted. I don't know what to think. I carried around an EpiPen for all those years, one that I suspect may be fake, seeing as my mother never got me to replace it, and I don't even know anymore. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for yelling at a woman after she wasn't behaving and making my job harder? I work in phlebotomy, and I like my job despite some of the craziness that happens, like what I'm about to share. So it's pretty shocking and funny how many people say that they are terrified of needles. I mean, these include grown men, and whenever they come to the lab and I need to take their blood, they're always sweaty, shaky, some of them cry, feel faint, all over a little poke. These are adults. Shouldn't they have gotten over it by now? It can be pretty frustrating when some sit there and cry slash overreact before slash during slash after the procedure because it just makes my job a lot harder, especially during the aftermath of a pandemic. Plus, it is really annoying and I kind of just want to yell at them to grow the hell up, which is kind of what happened today. So this young woman came in and she was already teary-eyed. I mean, this was before I even asked her to confirm her name. She was sitting down, palms clammy, breathing weirdly, so already she's working herself up for no reason. I'm getting my supplies ready and then she tells me that she's really scared of needles. And then she goes on and on about how she cries whenever she's near a needle, that she feels sick to her stomach, etc., I told her point blank that she's just working herself up over nothing and she needs to stop. Otherwise, it's going to make my job a lot harder. She begins to try and take deep breaths, but the tears are still flowing. Now she's starting to get on my nerves. Nonetheless, I begin to prep. Oh, poor woman. She then stops me and asks me to, one, give me a minute so that she can compose herself. Two, not show her any of my supplies slash prep my equipment because that would supposedly make her more, quote, anxious. It would. Yeah. The later was laughable because I have to have my supplies near me in order to draw blood in the first place. So I don't know where her brain came up with that. I had had enough. I looked at her and said, quote, look, are you going to behave yourself and let me do my job or not? If not, Get out and stop wasting my time. Okay, keep going. Keep going. This is painful, but keep going. She began to cry harder and said that she didn't mean to make me mad. She was just really terrified of needles. Yes. I told her, quote, yes, I heard you the first time. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? You're acting like a toddler. Isn't this person in healthcare? Like, tasked to take care of people? Then this woman says to me that the reason why she let me know that she was scared was because she wanted me to be gentle and comforting. Yes. My God, these people are so entitled. Not entitled. I asked her, quote, what do you think I am, your mother? My job isn't to coddle you and rock you to sleep. It's to take blood. If you can't act your age to even do that, then leave. She got up still crying, had the audacity to call me sick, and then left. 
So I was on my lunch break and then a coworker approached me and said that I treated that woman horribly. Yes. I told him that I was just trying to get my job done. Nope. He said that I shouldn't even be taking care of people if I'm going to, quote, act like this. Yep. And that I should pray that she doesn't file a complaint. What? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Wow. Okay. So let's see what Reddit thinks. Am I the asshole? I, 45 male, have stage four colorectal cancer, oh. and I will be dead in five years. Shoot. My partner, 37 female, wants to have a baby with me. Okay. Buckle up, everyone. Sorry. Last month, I was diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer. The prognosis was not good, and there have already been signs of spread to the rest of the body. I'll be dead within five years. The doctor said it'll most likely be sooner, given the status of the progression. We're going to try fighting it, but the chances of survival are slim, given the spread. I've been with my partner for 11 years now. We met at the library as I was doing my master's in behavioral psychology, and she was completing her undergrad in environmental science. I still remember the first time I saw her with her finger pressed so hard against a textbook as if it was going to fly away. We've talked about kids and marriage in the past, and it wasn't something either of us were interested in. We discussed it a few times, and she always said she would prefer to backpack across Vietnam, which we did, than raise a baby. It has been such an honor to be with her. After the diagnosis, we took our separate ways of grieving. She poured into her contacts and ways to fight this. Apparently, there's some magical Australian berry I have to start taking next week. I've come to accept it, and I will contact my lawyer soon to get my affairs in order. And here is my conundrum. She approached me a few nights ago, sat me down, and told me she wants to marry me and have a child or two with me. I was, of course, blindsided. Having a wedding or a child is the least of my priorities or wants at the moment because, well, I'm dying. She was adamant if this is the last thing I do for her, let it be this. She told me that it's only at the end of things that she realizes what's important to her. She told me she wants concrete things to remember me by, and being able to see my face in our child, as well as a wedding ring, which she said she'd wear even after my secession, is what she needs. I am concerned, and I voiced my concerns, which provoked tears. I told her that she has no family here. Her only family was a mother who passed away when she was 20. I told her her career is flourishing, and she has her passion in environmental monitoring. Being a single mother will be a huge impact on her. If I was going to be alive to help her, I'd be more amenable, but I won't. The discussion didn't end well. I'm lost on what to do. On one hand, I could go through with all of it and give her the family she wants, but I know her struggle will be immense. But on another hand, if she has a child, she may not be all alone after I die. What do you think? Please give me perspective. She will get everything when I die. Our net worth combined is estimated to be $1.5 million, so she won't be in want of money. Update. Um, thank you for all of the responses. Please know that I read through all of them and replied to a few. I took all of your views into consideration, and I appreciate the time and energy you all placed into your replies. I believe the general consensus was that I shouldn't have a baby, or that if I did, I should freeze the sperm and have her do as she wishes at a later point. Well, we cooled off, and I had a talk with her last night. We talked at length about the baby matter, and I had a strong discussion with her about the autonomy of the child, the ramifications of using a child as a grieving mechanism, and the effects of the child on her career. She hit the career point first and roughly laid out financial and practical plans to continue the course of her career while employing an au pair. I pointed out the possible bonding issues, but she said she would deal with that as it came. So that's the career point sorted. On the child front, she said that she understands my concerns, but she is still adamant that the child or children will be genetically spit between the two of us. As such, there will be remnants of us residing within them. She was honestly quite offended 
and reminded me that we're both scientists here. We know how babies are made, and we know how children are human beings who need their own autonomy. She told me that it is undeniable that when she hugs them at night or eats with them, there will be glances of me every now and again through them, and that's enough for her. That was the gist of the conversation. She asked how I felt. I told her I was nervous about the entire thing because kids are a lot of work. I also opened up and told her that I was concerned she may be going through a period of acute psychosis, not at all irregular, and I very easily misinterpret as rational. As such, I told her we should go to couples grief counseling Hmm. for a minimum of two months. If at the end of it, she still wants a baby, I'll do it. She didn't argue and we made up and had a nice evening. I've started recording birthday videos and writing Mm. letters to my possible future children, just in case. I love it. This sub forum doesn't let me update again, so this is it. You won't hear from me again. Thank you for your time. Please live a kind life. Mm. Edit, to those of you telling me to not give up hope about my survival, the cancer has spread to a number of different major organs and progressed within them, one of which is the pancreas, which at this stage is incurable. Another is my brain. I will be dying within the next few years. Thank you for your concerns, though. I appreciate the intent. Mm. 